Chapter Eleven of Iracema, the Honey Lips, A Legend of Brazil, by José de Alencar, translated by Isabel Burton. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Eleven. The Tabajara warriors, rushing to the Taba, awaited the enemy in part of the Caissara or Curral. The foe not coming, they went forth to seek him. They beat the forests all around and scoured the plains. There was no trace of the Pichiguaras. Yet the well-known war-boom of the shell from the shores had sounded in the ears of the mountain braves. Of this none doubted. Irapuã suspected that it was a stratagem of the daughter of Araquém to save the stranger. And he went straight to the wigwam of the pajé, as the Guará runs along the skirts of the forest, when following the trail of the escaping prey, so did the wrathful warrior hurry his steps. Araquém saw the great Tabajara chief enter his cabin, but he did not move. Sitting on his hammock with crossed legs, he was giving ear to Iracema. The maiden related the events of the evening. Beholding the sinister countenance of Irapuã, she sprang to her bow and placed herself by the white warrior's side. Martin put her gently away and advanced a few steps. The protection with which the Tabajara maid surrounded him, a warrior, annoyed him. Araquém, the vengeance of the Tabajaras demands the white warrior. Irapuã comes to fetch him. The guest is the beloved of Tupã whose soul molests the stranger, shall hear the voice of his thunder. It is the stranger who has offended Dupin, robbing him of his virgin, who keeps the dreams of the Jurema draft. The mouth of Irapuã lies, like the hiss of the jiboia, exclaimed Iracema. Martin said, Irapuã is vile and unworthy to be the chief of braves. The pajé spoke slow and solemnly. If the virgin has yielded the flower of her chastity to the white warrior, she will die. But the guest of Tupin is sacred. None shall touch him. All shall serve him. Irapuã raged. His hoarse growl rumbled within his muscular chest, like the noise made by the sucuri in the depths of the river. The wrath of Irapuã's anger will not let him hearken to the old pajé. It will fall upon him if he dare to withdraw the stranger from the vengeance of the Tabajaras. At this moment, the venerable Anjira, brother of the pajé, entered the cabin. He grasped the terrible tomahawk, and a still more terrible fury gleamed in his eyes. The vampire comes to suck Irapuã's blood, if indeed it is blood, and not honey, that runs in the veins of him who dares to threaten the old pajé in his wigwam. Araquém stayed his brother. Peace and silence, Anjira. The pajé raised his tall, thin stature, and appeared like the angry viper who crouches on the ground, the better to spring upon his victim. His wrinkles waxed deeper, whilst his shrunken lips displayed his white and sharpened teeth. Let Irapuã venture one step more, and the wrath of Tupin shall crush him with the weight of this lean and withered hand. At this moment, Tupin is not with the pajé, replied the chief. The pajé left and the sinister laugh seemed to roll round the enclosure like the bark of the Ariranha. Hear his thunder, and let the warrior's soul tremble as the earth in its depths. Araquém, pronouncing these terrible words, advanced to the middle of the wigwam. There he lifted up a great stone and stamped with force upon the ground, which suddenly clave asunder. 
a frightful noise, which seemed torn from the bowels of the earth, issued out from the dark cavern. Irapuã neither trembled, nor turned pale, but he felt his sight growing dim, and his lips lost their power of speech. The Lord of Thunder is for the Pajé. The Lord of War will be for Irapuã. The grim warrior left the wigwam, and soon his mighty form disappeared in the twilight. The Pajé and his brother resumed their conversation in the doorway. Martin, still surprised at what he had beheld, could not take his eyes off the deep cavern, which the stem of the old pajé had opened in the ground. A dull sound, like the distant boom of the waves breaking upon the shore, still echoed through the depths. The Christian warrior reflected. He could not believe that the god of the Tabajaras had given such immense power to his priest. Araquen, perceiving what was passing in the mind of the stranger, lit the cachimbo and seized the maracá, or mystic rattle. It is time, he said, to appease the wrath of Tupin and to hush the voice of his thunder. So saying, he left the cabin. Iracema then approached the youth with laughing mouth, with laughing mouth and eyes sparkling with joy. The heart of Iracema is like the rice plant, glad in the waves of the river. None can hurt the white warrior in the wigwam of Araquen. Keep away from the enemy, Tabajara maid, replied the stranger in a harsh voice. And retiring quickly to the opposite side of the wigwam, he hid his face from the tender, complaining looks of the virgin. What has Iracema done that the white warrior should turn away his eyes from her, as if she were the worm of the earth? The maiden's words, gently whispered, reached Matching's heart. Thus whispered the murmurs of the breeze in the fen leaves of the palm tree. The youth felt anger against himself, and sorrow for her. Dost thou not hear, beautiful virgin? exclaimed he, pointing to the speaking cave. It is the voice of Tupin. Thy God speaks by the mouth of his pajé. If the virgin of Tupin yield to the stranger the flower of her chastity, she shall die. Yasema hung her head. It is not the voice of Tupin that the pale-faced warrior hears but the song of the white virgin that calls to him. Suddenly, the strange sounds which came from the depths of the earth ceased, and there was so deep a silence in the wigwam that the pulses throbbing through the warrior's veins and the sighs that trembled on the virgin's lips were heard. End of chapter 11